<laughs> Today we're making a coaster and this is out of a curtain. It's actually a great way to use up your scrap fabrics and batting. So let's get started. These are the only materials you're gonna need. You need scissors, clips, you don't you can really go without clips or pins, of course, thread, coordinating thread, I would say. Um rotary cutter, very optional. And batting, of course. Right. So let's cut the batting. I'll be using five and a half inch square, but you can you can go smaller or a little bigger, but this is the perfect size I found for for myself. So like this, this is five inches square because half an inch is the seam allowance. So five and a half and it turns to a five inch square. These are the things I've already made. Um, I'm making for the market on the 27th here in Times Square, Dubai. Yeah, so if you happen to live in Dubai, please come visit me. Right, so let's cut our batting. It's a perfect way to use up your scraps like I do. I have been quilting for a while and I have a lot of scraps of batting and fabrics and all sorts. So it's a perfect way to use up your scraps. May it be batting or fabric. Now, okay, so first you lay your fabric um, wrong side up, sorry, right side up, and then your other fabric right side down, so they're facing each other. So for example, you have a print like this, you'll be doing, that's the print, that's the print, you're going to be doing that right and then your batting will be the last piece on top so let's do that here mine is a lot easier because I don't have right side or wrong side because it's the same so if you're using plain fabrics or you know linen or anything like this you'd be lucky to have that so it's much easier so let me just put that down. So again, if you're using directional prints, even directional prints or printed fabrics, you want the right sides to be facing each other. And you're batting on top of that. So here's, um, actually this is a charm pack, part of a charm pack. So if you have charm packs, uh, leftovers, you can use them up or you can even mix the plain and a printed one that'll be cute I might do that but for this video we're gonna do this so right right facing each other and then you're batting on top so now we're gonna clip all around you don't have to do this I actually don't do this, but if you're a beginner and you're not comfortable with your, um, you know, your fabrics, maybe it will be shifting around. I suggest you clip or you pin them. You pin them just like so. Because that will just, you know, make your life so much easier. But here, I'm just going to clip a few sides there. Now, we're going to go into our sewing, sewing machine and sew from here to the edge and all the sides here, leaving, say, a two and a half inch um, opening for turning inside out. Let's do that. So we're here at the sewing machine. We're going to be sewing half an inch um, seam allowance. So half an inch away from the edge. So like this. I would actually start from here. Back stitch. 
Then go over. This is also a nice housewarming gift. Just go slowly on the on the corner. You can back stitch there if you like. I went over. And there we have it. So I've sti stitched all the way but leaving two and a half inch um opening. There you go. Now, now let's clip the corners for a nice and crisp corners when we turn it inside out. Okay. do that I actually do the corners first this is a super easy project but very cute so it's very very beginner friendly this is one of the things I'll be selling at the market you can if you're doing a market soon and you're looking for ideas to sell, it's actually a great idea. Right, I have this, I don't know what you call this, but I use it for poking corners. It's got a round edge, so it's actually good. Go slow. You can use a chopstick or you can actually even use the tip of the scissors, but be, be very, very careful. Be very careful. Use your fingers to do that. There you go. Now you can iron this so it lays flat. But I won't be doing that just because I don't want to. <laughs> now I'm putting my label there in the middle. I have two here waiting. So let's clip that in place. If you don't have a label, that's fine. You don't have to have that. I use so professionally, so I need to have that so people know who made it. Right. So sew the edges very close to the edge, as close as you can get. Right. Move the camera a little bit so you can see. Go slow on the corners because it's the bulkiest bit. I do another square in the middle kind of give it a, a quilted vibe just like this you can't really see it yeah maybe you can see it like that yeah it's yeah you can't really see it but let's do that you can do any quilting designs here you can be really creative or you can just do straight lines, diagonal lines, whatever you want to do, it's fine. But for me, I want to keep it very easy, simple and minimal. 
So I'll do this. just clean out we're done now you get your cup I have one right here there you go there you have it so I've made these in less than an hour it's very quick and easy to make um, I'm selling them in a pack of two. You can do it however many you like. But um, I think two is good for me. There you go. Perfect um, project for your scraps and uh, fabric scraps and batting scraps. And also a very nice gift. Also, you can you can be really creative with probably an embroidery. If you have an embroidery machine or you can embroider by hand, you can embroider in the middle of flower or any design. Could be an uh, initial for the person you're giving it to or anything at all. So sky is the limit. It's very cute. And yeah, that's all guys. I have, well, I'm keeping one for my mug. There. It's also the, the square makes it a bit flatter in the middle, so it sits nicely. Yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope to see you again next time. Bye, have a good day and be kind to everyone.